Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in today's Kill Team Octarius update, we'll be taking a look at the new equipment and rules for Kill Team. It's that time again. It's update time for Kill Team Octarius, and here we are at the Warhammer community site, the 4th of August 2021, where we're going to look at the new equipment rules, which give your Kill Teams the right tools for the job, no matter the mission. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I've been waiting for more information about the equipment and how we're going to be able to give extra gear to our kind of operatives. So this is really fun and I can't wait to go through this article. So in this video, we'll go through it together and we'll check out all the details and find out about all the new updates. Okay, so let's get stuck into this new article today. So the new edition of Kill Team has been decided to give us a huge amount of strategic freedom when it comes to fighting skirmish battles. And this is easy to see in the ability to customise our operatives' equipment before battle. And so it tells us in the article that a kill team can never be fully prepared for the enemy they face, as their opponents are also elite warriors accustomed to the desperate, often scrappy warfare special operations demand. And veteran commanders know the value of a flexible cake of specialist equipment and can adapt to the mission and foes they face. So this is kind of telling us we're going to be able to start building up this cake of like all the different gear and equipment that we gather along the way, whether we find that in different missions, get it as rewards as part of a narrative campaign. And so we can dip in and out of this pile of equipment and equip it to different uh, operatives throughout the different battles. So I'm hoping that we can like like one time you can give a certain piece of equipment or gear to one operative, keep it. And then in the next battle, you can give it to someone else, depending on what that mission or operation is going to be about so this sounds really great and i love this idea of having this pool of equipment that we can just dip in and out of and equip it to our different fighters so this is a great start and so the good news is we're going to be able to equip our operatives with these extra pieces of gear for both matched and narrative play but it's going to be a little bit different in how we do that for each style of play so let's have a look at how that's going to work and first of all let's scroll down and look at match play and see how we can use equipment in match play. So while setting up for a match play game and after determining the mission and selecting our kill team, we're going to receive 10 points that we can spend on assigning gear to our soldiers. And each faction is going to have their own list of equipment to choose from. And this is going to include iconic gear like Tau, Marker Lights and Tyranid feeder tendrils. And so choosing the right equipment is going to mean the difference between life and death, especially when it gives you powerful defensive bonuses, like the shovel, the trench shovel we're going to see for the death core of Kree in a second. So here we've got a couple of items of gear here. We've got the marker light and we've got the trench shovel. And so these are going to give us some different um, add-ons that we can give our operative. So the operative can perform the following action during the battle. And if they've got the marker light, this is going to be one AP. And each time a shooting attack is made against an enemy operative in the roll attack dice step of that shooting attack, if that enemy operative has one or more marker light tokens, you can re-roll one of your attack dice. Okay, so okay, it doesn't really tell us how this is going to exactly work using how we use the marker light, but I guess we kind of um, target that fighter, and if one or more of your operatives have got the marker light attached as an item of their gear then that's going to allow more than one marker light tokens to be placed on that target so i guess that's how it's going to work so there we go so it gives us some um, re-roll opportunities there then we've also got the trench shovel and the, with this this is two ep I'm not sure what ep is that must be experience points which you gain so maybe you have to have two experience points to either purchase this or be able to use it. So the operative gains the following ability for the battle, and it's called Dug Trench. While this operative is wholly within your drop zone, each time an enemy operative makes a shooting attack, if it is more than one white circle from this operative, and that's going to be two inches, then this operative is treated as being in cover provided by light terrain. And this operative loses this ability if it performs a normal move, a charge if it falls back or carries out a dash action. So just like a lot of these update articles we've been getting recently, we're getting loads more keywords now. So we're starting to see fall back, dash, 
and different things like that. So really interesting to keep find out more and more keywords. These are certainly building up. Um, but going back to this EP, I'm thinking that previously in the article it said we received 10 points to spend on a signing gear. So um, I guess this must be some of those 10 points perhaps. So if it's two EP for a trench shovel and you get 10 points to spend gear on assigning gear to your soldiers, then you're not gonna get a huge amount of gear there. So is it 10 points per soldier or is it 10 points for the whole kill team? And so, yeah, I'm gonna say it's gonna be 10 points for the whole kill team, but I'd love to know what you think about that. And if you've played kill team before, the previous editions maybe this is something similar that they've done in that game so i'd love to hear your thoughts on that yeah but be interesting if the 10 points is for the whole kill team or per operative okay and scrolling down we're also going to see this feeder tendrils here another item of gear and this is again 2 ep and the operative gains the following ability for the battle feeder tendrils each time this operative incapacitates an enemy operative in combat it regains up to D3 Lost Wounds. So nice and simple, that one. Really good one. And um, again, if it's 2 EP, it must be 10 for the whole kill team. Then you could possibly have five of these, maybe, and equip five different operatives, each with the feeder tendrils. And that's going to make them pretty tough, all regaining their, their Lost Wounds with um, that D3 opportunity there. So there we go. So there's a few examples. But it's this next piece of information that I really like the sound of. And it tells us that many of the extra detailed parts included in each kill team have in-game rules to go with them. So plenty of grenades, maps, chronometers, smoke bombs and more that are featured on your miniatures function just as much as their weapons do. So this is really cool. This I think they're giving a fair bit of information away here. I think that first of all, the idea that all the different attachments that come on the sprues are all going to have roles to play in the game is brilliant so as we saw in the unboxing video for the new kill team octarius set there's just tons of extra things there and the ways you can customize both the orc commandos and the death core of krieg so that's really good but does this indicate that this is going to be the case for future kill team box set releases in the future so if they do a kill team box for just the tyranids are they going to get extra items included and things like that or are they going to do what we talked about in a previous video which was a great suggestion by one of the subscribers on the channel that said maybe they'll bring out little expansion sprue packs for all the different factions so if you play the uh, space marines then you can just buy this expansion pack that gives you extra gear that you can use in the game so i think this is a really interesting little paragraph there that could give us a lot of information away but i love the idea of playing what you see is what you get with the miniatures and i've got a few that i'm kill teams that i've got ready to go and i'm trying to put together and i'm holding off building them until we get the rules because if these little extra detailed parts and extra gear is going to play a big part in it and actually has a role in the game then i want to equip them with those pieces um so it all works so i don't want to go ahead and build them before i actually get the rules when I can wait and see exactly how I can use the gear. So really excited about that bit. That's a really good piece of information. So can't wait to find out what's gonna happen for future Kill Team releases once this Octarius box set comes out. Okay, so now let's have a look at how we can use our equipment when we're playing some narrative campaigns. And so reading on through the article, it tells us that Kill Teams embarked on narrative spec ops campaigns don't get free reign to choose what they want before each mission. Instead, they have to earn pieces of equipment that get added to their stash first as part of their act after action rewards. And on the plus side, their ongoing adventures give them potential access to even more powerful artifacts called rare equipment, which can have drastic effects on their abilities in battle. And many pieces of rare equipment directly enhance one of the bearer's weapons, finding an Archaeotech autoloader, for instance, can turn a very brave operative's plasma gun into a fully automatic death dealer. Okay, so this sounds pretty cool for the narrative campaigns. We're getting uh, like more different pieces of equipment and now these powerful artifacts too. So that's pretty good. So yeah, this is fun. Let's find out more about this as we scroll down. All right, so in this example, we've got the autoloader. Again, it's two EP, so it's gonna cost us two points by the looks of things here, but this weapon gains the ceaseless special rule. So we haven't heard about the ceaseless special rule yet, so let's find out about that. And here it tells us that for the ceaseless special rule, 
Each time a friendly operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack with this weapon in the roll attack dice step of that combat or shooting attack, you can re-roll any or all of your attack dice results of one. Okay, so it gives us a bit of extra chance there, so we can re-roll one, so that's pretty good. And um, if you've got a weapon or uh, operative that can make a, number, a good number of dice rolls for their attack, then this would certainly come in handy for sure. So that's pretty nice. And it says here, as we keep going down, it's not restricted to ranged weapons either. And so the buzzing power claw of an intrepid commando knob can suddenly become a crackling coil of raw lightning with the simple addition of an arc unit, just what you need when diving into the brutal melee of close combat. And here we can see this arc unit. Again, it's 2 EP. And this weapon gains the stun critical hit rule. And here we can see the stun rule, which tells us that each time a friendly operative makes a shooting attack with this weapon, in the roll attack dice step of that shooting attack, if you retain any critical hits, subtract one from the target's APL. And each time a friendly operative fights in combat with this weapon, in the resolve successful hit step of that combat, the first time you strike with a critical hit, select one of your opponent's normal hits from that combat to be discarded. And the second time you strike with a critical hit, subtract one from the target's APL. So another little cheeky rule here, the stun rule, that can certainly do some damage and trip up your opponent. So this is great to see all these different things coming in. I can't wait to find out what they're going to give us for all the different factions. And also, it'd be great to know exactly how many pieces of gear we're going to be able to draw from so lots to find out about i think but we can keep going now we're at the end of the article which carries on to say that whole treasure troves of equipment are waiting to be found so make sure to set forth on your spec ops campaign as soon as your troops are mustered and write the story of the galaxy's newest spec op heroes or villains you won't be judged so Looking good. I think there is going to be lots. I mean, if, it's, if War Cry is anything to go by, then there's some great uh, tables for the lesser artifacts and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's got to be the same in Kill Team. I really hope we get a, a rich source of equipment to draw from. We can always add our own, which is fun anyway. Um, but yeah, going to be really interesting to see what they come up with. And then the last paragraph says that customising your squad is one of the defining features of Kill Team. And the new equipment rules give you plentiful reasons to add a bit of extra flair to your miniatures. And so, again, building on that idea that we're going to get these extra sprues and we're going to get those equipment and they're all going to play actual parts in the game. So whatever we equip them with, we can actually have a piece of equipment and a rule that goes with it. So I really love that idea. So another really nice update. I'll be looking forward to find out more about the gear. They certainly leave in lots of room for us to find out more and I can't wait for the rules. I mean, it can't come quick enough at the moment. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to find out more about the the release date as well. So it just says at the bottom that it arrives for pre-order this month, but again, no actual date yet. So let's hope this weekend, perhaps we'll get some more information. We'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think about today's update and also about these EP points. It's gotta be 10 per kill team rather than per operative. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear your thoughts and feedback. You probably hear me talking about Warcry a lot throughout these videos, but it's a big passion of mine. I love the game. I've got over 260 Warcry videos on my channel. And so it's great to be able to compare that really fun, fast skirmish game with this new Kill Team Octarius. And so if you'd like to check out my comparison video, that's up on the channel and I'll link to it at the end of this video. And also you can catch up on all the news for Kill Team. I've done loads of videos for each update they've put out and I'll keep updating here as we get more information from the Warhammer community team too. So that's all on the channel. It'd be great if you want to check those out. But for now, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm loving these updates and can't wait to find out more and obviously can't wait for the release too. It's going to be great to get my hands on the game and start creating some awesome content to share with you guys. So thanks again for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there.